Welcome back to the King's Podcast, The Wellness Dive with Lucky. I'm your host, Esther Lucky. Today we are joined by Dr. Basim Khalil, consultant pediatric surgeon, fresh off the board from England. Dr. Basim, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you and very much. And for agreeing to take us on a deep dive into pediatric surgery and what it entails. Yeah. But before we go there, tell us about yourself. Oh, um, I'm a consultant pediatric surgeon, as you rightly said. I trained in the UK. Uh, I was very lucky. I uh, trained in a in some of the major children's hospitals in Britain. Mm -hmm. um, I trained at the Royal Manchester Children's Hospital, which uh, is one of the largest standalone children's hospitals in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I also trained at Alder Hay Children's Hospital, which is a very prestigious center at Liverpool. I was also lucky to be a consultant in both hospitals. So mm. I was a consultant at the Royal Manchester Children's and also a consultant at Alder Hay Children's Hospital. Wow, well, that's a lot of hospitals. How many years of experience do you have? Oh, well, um, I've been a consultant for 12 years. Wow, yeah, amazing. So let me ask you, uh, when you talk about pediatric surgery, what does it actually mean? So pediatric surgery, the word pediatric means children. Yeah. So it is surgery on children. And uh, for the purposes of this institution, um, it's any child from the day they were born till they are 18 years of age. Mm -hmm. So that's our bracket for the definition of children here at King's. Mm -hmm. So we operate on children who are a few hours old um, um, until the age of 18. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And right. it's, it's, it's very interesting because pediatric surgery is very different from adult surgery, surgery on adults. From normal general it, surgery. It has its own sets of skills. It has its own um, ways of dealing with the children at different ages. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And of course, you're also dealing with parents. And and these are cardinal to our success. Uh -huh. So we, we look at parents as part of the team. They are integral to the child's care uh -huh. and the treatment. Um, and so we, we, we integrate them very much into our practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here at King's, we have uh, the King's Pediatric Surgery Unit. Yes. What does it entail? What is it all about? What do we have here? What makes us special? At King's, we, we have a multidisciplinary team. Pediatric mm -hmm. surgery can only succeed in, a, in, in multidisciplinary teams. Um, so we have the surgeons uh, uh, and we have the intensive care specialists. Mm -hmm. uh, we work with very closely with our neonatologists. Mm -hmm. So neonatologists are doctors who deal with newborn babies mm -hmm. up until the age of four weeks uh, of corrected age. Um, and we have a very highly specialized neonatal intensive care unit here. And so we're capable of doing major surgery on newborn babies. Mm -hmm. um, we have a, a large team of pediatricians mm -hmm. that also support the surgical service of the sub, with the subspecialties. And we've got anesthesia, of course. Mm -hmm. We've got safe anesthesia for the children. And the babies. Uh, and the babies that need to be operated mm -hmm. upon. Mm -hmm. It's a huge team. I mean, you can take it from anything from dietitians mm -hmm. to physiotherapists, to occupational therapists, to speech and language therapists, to radiology. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's almost as if you've got an entire hospital with all the subspecialties um, that are targeted towards uh, the child. Mm -hmm. uh, and that makes a, a high level pediatric practice. Here at King's, we're very proud of our neonatal intensive care unit, mm -hmm. uh, which is really highly specialized. And we have been able um, to perform major surgery yeah, on new yeah, babies. Yeah. I, I know, they're, they're, they're very good. I had Dr. Maria here the other yes. day, yes. and I'm looking forward to having uh, Dr. Harry Kumar. Yes, yes. yes. They're amazing. What are the most common pediatric procedures that you perform? And if you could also tell us the conditions that lead to these procedures. So pediatric surgery is a very, very wide spectrum mm -hmm. of, of, of surgery. But the ones I perform, are uh, you can divide them into the neonatal surgery and then surgery of child. So neonatal surgery are the surgeries we'll do on newborn babies. And I would perform surgeries on the esophagus in a newborn baby. If the baby is born with a blocked esophagus, uh, I would be able to repair that for them. Or if they have problems in their bowels mm -hmm. and they're born with problems in their bowels or problems in their diaphragm, and the diaphragm mm -hmm. is the muscle that helps us to breathe, mm -hmm. uh, we would be able to perform that. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the surgery of childhood, um, and that's above the neonatal period. Mm -hmm. And the commonest things are really day, what we call day case procedures. Mm -hmm. So procedures that can be done when the child just comes in 
and goes home the same day, such as hernias. Mm -hmm. And these are swellings that can happen around the groin or around mm -hmm. the belly button. Um, and it, uh, conditions that affect the testicles, for instance, in boys. Mm -hmm. Sometimes children have testicles that haven't descended where they're supposed to mm -hmm. descend. Mm -hmm. uh, and they can be high up either in the groin or in the abdomen. And we would be able to do such cases for them. Mm -hmm. um, and we do that as a day case procedure they can come in and go home the same day mm. we also deal uh, with other more complicated stuff uh, that can happen in this in in, in children mm -hmm. uh, for instance um, uh, abnormalities of the bowel itself can happen in child and we can deal with that mm -hmm. um, inflammations within the bowel in 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 the older children mm -hmm. we will also be able to deal with that um, and then we also deal with emergencies mm. so most of the emergencies that can happen in children, we'll be able to deal with them here at King's. Mm -hmm. And the most common emergencies we see in children are interestingly very similar to those in adults. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's appendicitis, for instance, where the oh. appendix is inflamed. I didn't yeah. know it occurs in children. Oh, yes, no, it does occur in children pretty, uh, it's pretty common. common in children. Yeah, that's pretty common that we see them. Uh -huh. uh, it's one of the commonest emergencies that we can have in children. Mm -hmm. But again, more complicated emergencies like intestinal obstructions or bowel mm -hmm. obstructions mm -hmm. that can unfortunately happen in children as well. Mm -hmm. So we are capable of dealing with what we would call straightforward conditions, but we're also capable of dealing with more complicated con uh, conditions. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to take you back a little bit to appendicitis. Yes. Yeah. You just mentioned it and you yeah. it's very common. Yeah. Uh, what are the most common symptoms that parents should watch out for? So in, in appendicitis, again, it's one of those conditions that also has some similarities with what you see in the adult mm -hmm. uh, presentations. So they usually would have pain, usually starting around the belly button area. Uh -huh. And then it starts to go more to the right side, lower right side. And the child starts to really feel pain, wants to vomit or becomes nauseous. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes they wouldn't open their bowels as well uh, with the pain uh, at the same time. And then they would come here. The mom would always most likely see that the child's in pain uh -huh. and then bring them over to be mm -hmm. checked by the mm -hmm. specialists. So when you talk to the child, what do they tell you? So that oh, they can and watch now, children and watch out for this. Children are very, very um, very intelligent beings. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they will describe if it is and where's the pain, they'll point. Ah, uh, uh, so they're they pointing directly. They can point at it. But sometimes appendicitis happens in children less than the age of five. Yeah. And it might be difficult for the child to for the localize child to pain yeah. uh, and to localize where the problem is. And that's where physical examination comes in. Mm. And this is where then the, the field of being a pediatric surgeon becomes specialized. Mm -hmm. Because how do you deal with a child less than the age of five who is not able to communicate effectively of course. Uh, what's wrong with them? We have our own ways and techniques of eliciting the problems with the child. So for appendicitis, give us an example of oh, no, specialized communication. Oh, no, and I can't tell you that, that, takes, uh, that that's taken about 20 years of training, certainly. <laughs> and it's top secret. And, no, it's not top secret. No, I'm just, that's, that's actually just a joke. So sometimes it's to get the child distracted. Uh -huh. And then as we get the child distracted, we start to press uh, on the tummy. Mm -hmm. And you can always feel when the child, what we call guarding, and that happens in adults as well, mm -hmm. that they guard. But if you're able to distract the child and then they suddenly guard, then you know that that's what you know, there's a problem there. Yeah. Our colleagues in radiology, those that do investigations and mm -hmm. scans, we can we can use that. Mm -hmm. So would you tell a mom or a dad or any guardian at home when the baby starts complaining about tummy pain, they should take it seriously? I think any child that complains of pain anywhere, not just in it the tummy, it should be taken seriously. It should be taken seriously, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, children, children are... are I wouldn't say better than adults in this, but they're, they're very specific. You know, if a child is unwell, the child's unwell. Mm. And there is no, um, and when they get better, they get better. Yeah. You, you will see that for yourself because they're happy when they get better. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they're sad when they are unwell. So right, I think, right. I think, and moms are, are generally experts at knowing when their children are, are not well. What about dads? Uh, dads are good, but moms are the experts. <laughs> so now that um, we've been talking about the child at home, complaining yeah. about tummy pain or whatever pain there is, what's the pathway when they come to the hospital to see you? Can they book a consultation with you directly? Can they do a walk-in? Do you do they have to be referred from other pediatricians here or the GPs here or from a, a satellite clinic outside? How does it work? So the short answer is all of the above. 
Uh -huh. the, the good thing about kings is that we're open to all that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But from the point of view of pain, she shouldn't, mom shouldn't really wait for a consultation. Or parents shouldn't wait for a consultation. She should do a work-in. They should go to, to, the work -in, to the emergency room. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, doctor, I'm going to ask you, roughly how many cases have crossed your desk for the last 12 years? Oh, no, we're talking about. And is there a particular one that actually stood out up to this day? I know they all made a mark. They they all make a mark. I mean, the, the, the thing about children is they make a mark. Yeah. And... Uh, the, the the greatest thing about treating a child is seeing the child getting better and going back home safely with the parents mm -hmm. and and it, you know there's there is nothing greater than that and i would say this as as most of my colleagues will agree that it is the one specialty that you you, you don't do it because of money you don't do it because of anything. Not that any other subspecialty of medicine is done because of money. No, of course not. Uh, but but it is not. Has it seriously? I mean, it, it, medicine is more about values. Yes, doctors have to be well paid. There is no doubt about it. But this is the one specialty where there is no amount of money um, that equates to the smile of a child. Mm -hmm. It's 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 amazing. It's fascinating. I've done it for twenty years, and it's still. You know, you see it's still that amazed. he's still amazed about that smile of the child and the parents who are, you know, uh, really relieved to have their child back mm. and the kind of anxiety that parents go through. Mm -hmm. it, it's it, it's priceless. Mm -hmm. It's it's really, really, really priceless. Mm -hmm. And you don't get tired of it. Would you call it um, a calling? I think medicine overall, mm -hmm. uh, Esther, is a calling. Right. Well, pediatric surgery is a calling and a love. You have to love it to do it because it's on its own. It's a very stressful um, uh, subspecialty. You're not just dealing with the patient. You're dealing with the patient and parents who, for all intents and purposes, feel the pain of their child, sometimes even more than their own child feels the pain mm -hmm. because they would rather, they'll do anything to get their child back uh, to normal. They'll literally do anything. Yeah. So you're dealing with a very, very tense um, situation. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times we're, we're not just trained to operate, we're, we're trained to calm down the situations mm -hmm. and be honest with the parents and integrate the parents into our work. It, there, is a, there has to be a love for it. There has to be a passion for it. Mm -hmm. There has to be a flair for it. You must know how to deal with children. You must love dealing with children. And you must uh, love children. And you must love children. And 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 you, you must love working with children. Mm -hmm. You must know how to do that. Um, and then yes, you can you can do pediatric surgery. Mm -hmm. But I would say that the few children that have really made a mark on other children's mm -hmm. conditions, and these are the ones that would stand out if a pediatric surgeon was to speak about. Now, I'll give you a very one example of that. I once worked um, in another country, and um, when I when I my first few weeks in that country, I was shown a baby who was born prior uh, to its correct date. Okay. So these are preterm babies. Preterm babies, yeah. So we also operate on preterm babies. I mean, my smallest baby was less than half a kilo in weight. Wow. But this one was um, really pretty tiny. She she was just above a kilo and had lost, due to inflammation of her bowels, had lost over 90% of her small bowel, the gut. And this is what you use to absorb the nutrients and grow. Mm -hmm. And she had lost over 90% of that. Her liver was beginning to fail. Mm -hmm. And she was supposed to be transferred to one of the major centers in the West. And my worry was, I didn't think she would okay. make it. Mm -hmm. So there you are, you, you, you're just new to a country. Um, uh, this was a few years ago. And you have to do what you can do. Well, I luckily we created very quickly a good team. And we started to do some procedures. The combination of these procedures were the first time they were done in that country. And, you know, thank the good Lord, she survived. Oh. She her liver recovered because we instituted a program to recover the liver, mm -hmm. and we were able to do major bowel reconstructive surgery. And this is something I subspecialize in, mm -hmm. which is bowel reconstructive surgery mm -hmm. in babies, and we were able to do that. And she went home. 
with her parents oh. at the end of almost a year in in hospital oh she spent one year in the hospital. almost a year in hospital. Wow. Wow. and um and what came out of this little baby was because we were now able to work as a team we created a national service mm -hmm. for children who had her condition uh -huh. and that continued to help other children that were having similar conditions rather than flying them abroad mm. or those children basically passing away mm. you now have a a system that has been able to help other children mm -hmm. so this little child is very special mm. because she helped other children she helped others, yeah. that came after her mm -hmm. and that's the beauty of 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 this kind of work wow yeah impressive to lighten the moment a bit uh -huh. how did you end up in uh, pediatric surgery oh <laughs> okay so I, I i i have both parents as surgeons all right my father was a surgeon mm -hmm. and my mother was a surgeon okay um so it's a, it's a, it's a family of surgeons okay and so my mom um uh took the decision that i will be a surgeon so really i didn't have much choice in in the whole matter um, um and so i loved children mm -hmm. and i loved pediatrics so when my mom said you're gonna have to be a surgeon mm -hmm. i had to be a surgeon you had to join the family business uh, well we have interestingly we don't have a business between all four of us uh, uh surgeons because my older brother is also a, as it's also a surgeon so there is not a business as such but so the family career of choice yes it was it was basically uh, around that and i come from a generation uh where you where you didn't say no to your mom and uh, that word no doesn't exist in mother's dictionary uh if you know what i mean uh and so uh if mom said you must do something uh, you better do it uh but that, that's the way it goes in uh, so you had to do it uh, so i had to do it mm -hmm. do i regret it no of course not i think she she um she chose the best thing for me and i think you're one of the best doctor well <laughs> Well, remember how we said mothers know best yes. and fathers, so we don't. We so don't. we should be appreciating your mom. Yeah, but it's it's you know my my mom. Uh, yeah, I think she's she's passed away now, but she uh, I think she remains an inspiration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, doctor. Thank you so much for joining us today, yeah. and I wish you all the luck in the world. Thank you very much, and welcome to Dubai once more. Thank you, and I hope actually I'm very sure you're going to enjoy living in Dubai. Thank you very much and here at kings thank you <laughs> okay ladies and gentlemen there you have it dr basem Khalil, consultant pediatric surgeon here at kings for more information about dr Khalil, or to book an appointment with him or to book an appointment and another appointment that would lead you to him get in touch on our website until next time goodbye